A new publication in JAMA Pediatrics updates the latest data on prediabetes diagnosis in teenagers. And not a surprise, it's going the wrong way. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and this is another sobering publication. It came out in JAMA Pediatrics called Trends in Prediabetes Among Youths in the U.S. from 1999 through 2018. And what they did was they went through the, the NHANES database and the, um, all the information that they get from following different populations and different people over time and look at the diagnosis of prediabetes. And what they showed was they compared the 1999 to 2002 data and the 2015 to 2018 data. And what they found for the whole population of teenagers, the prevalence of prediabetes increased from 11% up to 28%, more than doubled in that time frame, 11% to 28%. I mean, that's just outrageous. And it was even worse for males. Males increased from almost 16% to 36%. And from for females, from 7%, to almost 20%. But here's another really disturbing part about this is for normal weight individuals, the prevalence increased from 9% to 24% in normal weight individuals. So this, this has a whole lot of disturbing information in it. One, just the dramatic rise in the prevalence of, of prediabetes. And this is under the auspices of a medical community, a nutrition community that its goal has got to be to promote health, right? With the uh, with dietary guidelines, with um, you know interventions of of food, how they present food at schools, what's allowed, um, you know, working with dietitians, working with your pediatrician, what's the common advice? This more than doubling of prediabetes happened under the watchful eye of the medical community, and that's really disturbing. But the other thing is the prevalence of prediabetes in normal weight teens, and, and this is you know, defined by body mass index. And this is concerning because if someone's uh, overweight or obese, has a very high waist to height ratio, you can suspect prediabetes, screen for it, and maybe try to intervene at that point, as long as you're thinking about it. And that's a big part of the problem. So many clinicians aren't even really thinking about it and testing for it. So even in those who are overweight, it can you can slide under the radar if people aren't checking, you know, fasting insulin levels, oral glucose tolerance tests, HOMA IRs, tests that are used to to screen for insulin sensitivity. If they're just using fasting blood sugar, hemoglobin A1C, you can still miss a number of people if that's the only way you're defining prediabetes, which is how it's typically defined. But then if you someone's normal weight, most doctors wouldn't even think about that if they're normal weight. But that just shows what happens in our uh, current society of ultra-processed foods, hyper-palatable foods, focusing on low-fat, high-carb foods, which opens the door for all these ultra-processed foods. And we're seeing the result. Now, of course, the question is always, well, is it because people are following a low-fat diet that they... Um, end up with prediabetes, or is it because we're recommending a low-fat diet, which they then have a hard time sticking to, and that opens the door to all this snacks and and um, you know the environment, uh, the food environment is not a healthy one, right? You need to be on your best game, so to speak, to to um, to be able to walk past all the temptations you see on a daily basis, especially for someone who's a teenager, where there's peer pressure, where you know your life sort of revolves around pizza and ice cream and Coca-Cola and whatnot, right? Like that's that's normal for teens, or that's what's become normal for teens. And now what's becoming normal for teens is prediabetes because of that. So it's a very disturbing publication, but hopefully it's going to open our eyes. One, for the need for increased screening, even in normal weight individuals, even in normal weight teens, we need to be looking for prediabetes. We need to be looking for insulin resistance. And then two, thinking of other ways to try to solve the problem. The same old advice of count your calories, move more, low fat has not been working. Now, whether it's because people are sticking to it and it's not working or because people can't stick to it, in my mind does not matter because it's not working. So we need to look for other opportunities, other interventions. And this is where low carb interventions can be very, very helpful. High protein interventions can be very helpful. I mean, let's face it, it's difficult for a teenager to follow a ketogenic diet. Not impossible, it certainly can happen, um, but it, it, it can be a challenge. And that's where you know maybe lower carbs, moderate to liberal low carb with higher protein diet might be a better option 
uh, in a teenager. But the key is to look for other options, right? There's not one way to eat. There's not one prescription uh, for a lifestyle to prevent or treat prediabetes. There are options and we need to be open to those options. So a diet doctor, that's one of the things we want to provide is, is other options, whether it's um, ketogenic diets, whether it's moderate or, or liberal low carb diets, whether it's high protein diets, or now whether it's focusing on a higher satiety per calorie approach, focusing on reducing hunger, reducing appetite with foods you enjoy, foods you love, foods that are going to give you the nutrition you need. All of these options exist and we have to think outside the box that so many of us have been trained that there's one way uh, to treat this problem. So hopefully this, this helps kind of open your eyes as a clinician um, or as an individual about what needs to be done to um, prevent this trend from increasing with our youth. I mean, think about it. If you already have prediabetes as a teenager, what does that mean for the rest of your life and the rest of your adulthood? The risk of progressing to diabetes and, and having complications has got to just increase dramatically, and we need to prevent that. All right, so check out all our resources at dietdoctor.com. Hopefully there's something there that will help you, inspire you to get on the healthy track. Um, and maybe if you have teenage kids, um, it can help you with them as well. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you next time at Diet Doctor News on YouTube.